Well, good morning, Journey Online. It is such a pleasure and a privilege to have you on. Come Let's on. go. Happy Sunday. If we haven't had the privilege of meeting, my name is Hector, and I get to be one of your pastors here at Journey Church. And who I got right here? Good morning, everybody. My name is Gio Rivera. I get to serve as the admin director here at Journey, and I'm yes. just so happy to be with you this morning. I'm excited for today. I'm excited today. Let's go. And Let uh, us know where you are watching from. Please put yes. it on the chat. Put on the comment section if you want to emoji it, whatever it is, where you're watching. If you're watching yes. from your living room, if you're watching from your kitchen, if you're watching from an airplane. Right. What are you yeah. up to? What are you, what are you doing right now? Are you cooking breakfast? How do you like your eggs? I like mine sunny side up. How about you? How do you like your eggs? Bro, I like anything with adobo on it. Let's Ooh, go. And if you don't on. know what adobo is, it is Spanish seasoning. It is close to heaven. It is yeah, manna from right. heaven. It's anointed by God. Come, Come on. on. That's great. I love it. Yeah, I we got some it. great ways to get connected. We got groups, right? F Facebook groups right we, we got we got facebook groups uh, if you are online let me tell you uh, we got a facebook online journey church fa uh, group just for you we yes. got a ton of different Come groups on. out there on facebook but you want to join that's right the journey online facebook group listen to me if you are watching this if you are hearing my voice if you are cooking leave the eggs leave the adobo and go join that group right now it is amazing yes let me tell you there are so many things that you can do you can find out more about who we are as Journey Church, or you yes. can also talk about sermons, particularly last week. Yes. Woo! Yes. Last week, we had Pastor Travis Jones. Yeah. What a powerful message that it was. Uh, it was entitled, Is It Too Late? And what I love about that sermon for me, it, it spoke to when, when um, David had, a, he was called, right? And just because you are called, that doesn't mean you're not going to face giants because yeah. David faced a giant and many giants so after good. that. And that really spoke to me. And let us know, how did it speak to you? Mm -hmm. how, did it apply, how did you apply it this week? Uh, Pastor Hector, how about you? What were some takeaways? Well, let me tell you what my giant was. Whew. So I loved right from the beginning, man. This, this guy didn't pull punches right from the beginning. Pastor Travis talks about how he wanted God to not only call him, but to let him know about the fine prints. Ooh, let me yes. tell you about those fine prints, man. Those fine prints are so key because <laughs> those fine prints will let you know that, yes, you are called, yes. but you might have to tweak some relationships in order to meet that call. That's right. And for me, it was leaving a high-paying job so that I can pursue ministry a week before, a week after I got married. Wow. Like, that was the calling. that I've always had a pastoral calling, but I remember... The moment that I heard God's voice yes. through a lot of signs and through a lot of prayer and through a lot of scripture. So uh, let me tell you, uh, I love the fine prints because the fine prints is an opportunity for God to shape your character to fit and match your calling. That's right. Yeah. So please share with us. How did this speak to you? And share this yeah. message, share this live stream, share this with your, your friends, your family, your neighbor, your neighbor's dog, your neighbor's goldfish. Share this, Come share on. this live stream right now and yes. invite people in, invite them in and to join you, to join us today. That's right, that's right. And there's an, and there's other ways to there's other ways to connect. You can connect through the Facebook page. Yes. We also have a Bible reading app that we have been in for about a yes, year now. That's right. And so the Bible reading app is amazing. It's wonderful. You can tag your friends on the Bible reading app. You can do a Bible reading plan together. If you want to know more about the Bible reading plan, you can go to journeyrl.com forward slash homepage, yep. or you can just download the Bible version app. Yeah. It's free. There's no charge to it. The That's only right. thing that you need to do is just do it. That's right. It's never That's too late. the only cost. Never too late, right? Never too late to go ahead and do it. Well, friends, we are about to go into the time of worship. Get out your pen, get out your paper, put a fire emoji, and we will see you after worship. God bless you. See you soon. Welcome home, Journey Church. Let's get ready to praise God. Come on, clap your hands with me. Yeah, you're so good at fire. You're so good. Bring it down, down. We all be looking for a silver 
Just a moment, would you lift your hands towards heaven? The sign of surrender to him this morning. Thank you, Jesus. So about you. When we sing, I've tasted. I have tasted, I have seen. The realness of your love for me. It's written, it's written on your hands and feet. You want to sell the evidence? It's all the evidence I'll ever need. Come on, sing your love. Your love is better than life. I can't even wrap my mind around it. One day, here in your house is better than a thousand elsewhere. 
It's the hope that can take your place. Come on, sing. It's nothing. It's nothing that can separate. Oh, you love. You do. How high, how wide, how deep. You love. You create yourself. great reminder that worship song gives us to yes. run and run and run and, yes. and run and run and which yes. is actually what we're going to do right now we believe yes. that the scripture right. says prayer without ceasing and that's exactly what we're going to we're not going to quit in prayer and so we've got some prayer sure. requests sure. that are on the screen right now uh online community if you feel comfortable would you stretch your hands yes. as we put this worship song into practice yes. father we thank you lord for the opportunity to be able to present yes, to lord. you these yes. prayer requests we ask for somebody who has lost a loved one. Yes. God, we know in the scripture it says that you are close to the brokenhearted. And that scripture has so much depth because yes. Jesus himself, when he found out his cousin was murdered, uh, what he did was he went to a solitary yes. place yes, yes. to pray and to process what just happened. So you know how we feel when we lose someone who loves us and we just pray that your presence is with them. Uh, the same way that you are, Father, going to be with this person yes, who is Lord. praying for yes. healing for a thyroid 
so that they can avoid surgery, Lord. We know that you can heal instantly in yes, the name Father. of Jesus, yes. but also there is fear tied to this request, Lord God. And we just pray, Father, that you deal with that fear, Lord. The Bible says that perfect love casts out fear yes. so that, Lord, they can hear not their anxious thoughts coming through their mind, but the voice of yes. healing that is ministering to them at this moment. And lastly, we pray for this new business venture that is about to take off. God, we want to pray not, not so that this person only gets prosperity, yes. but we understand and realize that new businesses creates new jobs, which means, Father, those who are in need will have a place that they can work. We love you and we honor you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray for all of this. Yes. Amen, amen. Let's give it up for answered amen. prayers. I love amen. it. I yes. love it. And they also can submit their prayer requests, right? That's right. That's right, because we serve yeah. a God of answered prayer, and, and it says that the Lord... Is his ears are open to our prayers. Yeah. And if you'd like to submit a prayer request, you can do yep. so at journeyroll.com forward slash prayer dash praise, or you can scan the QR code below to submit a prayer request or a Amen. praise report. So, and if you're just joining us, my name is Gio Rivera, and I get to serve as the admin director here at Journey Church. Hey, who are you? What's your name? My name is Hector, and I get to serve as the pastor, as one of the pastors here at Journey Church. Come on. Come on, come on. Ooh. And Looks like we got we, some people. Come on. What we got? Oh, we got uh, Michael from Wikiwachi, and we got Let's Molina go. from Bolivia. Come on. Let's Hello go. there. How Hi. are you doing? Good How morning. are you doing? And if you are joining us, uh, you might be joining us for one, two, three, maybe four times. But if this is your first time, we would love to know. We want to connect yes. with you. We want to know what your name is, if, you've got, if you're married, if yes. you have kids, uh, where you're watching from, and where you're from so that you can join our online community. Our first-time guests are super special here at Journey Church. That's right. And that includes you who are online as well. And if you are online and this is your first time, we want to know. And the way that you can do that is by scanning the QR code that you see on the screen or going to journeyorl.com forward slash connect card. Please fill that out. Take that time right now. We would love to know and reach out to you. Yes, yes. And whether if you're a first-time guest yeah. or a long-time member, uh, there's other ways for you to get connected as well. We have Next Steps. And Next Steps love is an it. amazing uh, place. We want to invite you to join Next Steps. Next Steps is yeah, an online do. session in which you get uh, invited to to find out and learn more about you. And we get to, you get to learn more about us as well and how you can be led to serve with yeah. giving your passions, your gifts, your calling uh, to help serve the, uh, the, the kingdom of God and Journey Church right where you are, right at your location. You could join Next Steps and serve. And so if you'd like to join Next Steps, you can do so at journeyoral.com forward slash next steps, or you can scan the QR code below for next steps. That's so good. We got so many ways to connect here at Journey Church. I'm the small groups pastor, so I want to know how you're getting connected. And I want to talk to the guys who are watching us come online. On, online. On. If you're a guy, please put up that muscle emoji. Come on. Let me see, or, or that bench press emoji, whatever it Let's is, go. man. And let me know that you are watching us right now because we got something for you coming up this Friday. It is our Reclaim Men's, Men's Night. Night. Come on. Come on. I am Let's so go. excited. We got something planned. And it, it, this is your excuse, guy. If you're online and you wanted to find an excuse to come here, Come, we Come got it by. for you. We got well, we got pickleball, we got barbecue, Corn we got holes. a bench press. We got we got we got food, we got a car show. We got a car show. We got, and we got a worship service as well. Let's go. This Friday, April 26th at 6:30 p.m. Yeah. If you're in the area, Come on by. You could uh, click the uh, um, uh, the. You could scan the QR code below or yes. visit journeyroll.com forward slash events. Looking forward to seeing you there. That's right. That's right. And all of this is made possible. Let me tell you, all of this is made possible. The men's night. Yes. The the online experience. Everything is made possible through your generosity. And we just want to say thank you first and foremost for that. Yes. And uh, I remember a story. Uh, Alex. Uh, Alex was. You know, he wasn't from Florida. He came mm -hmm. here for school and he got plugged in right away, but he came with some church hurt mm. and okay. uh, he came to journey church. He did the next steps. He got connected. He started serving and in the name of Jesus, yeah, yeah, he yeah. was healed because of the community. That's right. And so if, if you want to partner with us on generosity, you can do so by going to journeyrl.com forward slash give. You can scan the QR code or you can text journey to 779 Seven, seven. Yes, and another way you can give as well is you actually can share this message that's on this live stream right now. Invite people in, invite people in to join you, and also invite the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Right. Go. Well, we're about to go into one more song of worship. Uh, please prepare your hearts. Get a pen. Get a paper. 
and we will see you after the message. God bless you. See you. Come on, at this time, we're going to welcome our online and our East Campus joining us in worship. Come on, let's continue to press in. Thank you. Just thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's sing this together. And look at the flowers and all of their beauty. Oh, we sing. I don't have to wonder. You know what you're doing. Oh, Jesus. So I would have worried it all when you're faithful to.
some praise. Come on, if you know the Lord will provide, let him know that you know. Let your soul know that you know. Let the enemy know that you know. Let your neighbor know that you know that the Lord will provide. The other day I was watching, a, well, my son wanted to watch something. It was like PG-13, and he's not quite 13 yet, and I saw you can't watch it. And then he was like, well, you just wait. In a couple years, I'm going to be 13. He's like, and legally, he's like, legally, you cannot keep me from watching this movie. And I was like, bro, I don't think you know what PG means behind the 13. It means parental guidance. In other words, 13 is what they recommend. But me, as your parent, that gene means I got the last word. That's what that gene means. And so if, if it's good for you to watch, I'm going to let you watch it. But if I withhold it from you, then just know I'm not withholding it from you because I want to keep something good from you. If I'm withholding it from you, it's because I feel like it's not going to be good for you or serve you in this season. I'm talking to somebody who does not have what they want. And you're looking at God going, Lord, what's going on, man? You said in your word, why are you not fulfilling your word? I just want to remind you that the song says, everything I need, my father. We didn't sing, everything I want. Everything I need, here's what I know, my God has it, and my God has given it to me. Which also means, here's the even more powerful revelation, that it also means, and that if I don't have it, that must mean, I don't need it. Because if I needed it, he'd have given it to me because he gives me everything I need. So if I don't have it, I can stop crying about it because I don't need it. It's not going to serve me. It's not going to help me. I trust you, God. You're my provider. Everything I need. Come on, tell him. Everything. You got it. together. Give God some praise. If you believe your father's got it, if you know you got it, you got him, you got it. Father, we love you. Thank you for giving us everything we need. And thank you. Somebody ought to praise God for every prayer he did not answer. You know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about him. I'm talking about her. I'm talking about that job at that business that went out of business that you were about to move across the country for. Thank God for every prayer you didn't answer, Lord. Because if I don't have it, I didn't need it. So I praise you out of a spirit. I don't know why this word gets so much negative publicity, but it's so powerful. I thank you out of a spirit of contentment. Are you content in life? I'm content. Why? Because everything I need, I have. I can trust my Father in those situations. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, who's excited to be in the house of God today? Me too. 
Why don't you find three people you haven't said hi to yet, give them a big high five and tell them he got it. Come on, tell them he got it. He needs to be reminded. He got it. He got it. He got it. Amen. Well, before we get into the message and encourage you today, I just want to take a second to introduce myself. If we haven't met yet, my name is JJ, and alongside my wife, Liz, we have the honor and privilege of serving Journey Church as its lead pastors. And if you didn't know that, that means you are a first-time guest, and we're so glad that you chose to be with us uh, today. Uh, we are grateful that you went through all the work that it takes to get to church. You overcame the kids. You overcame the bad hair day. You overcame the makeup. Everything that you had to write through to get here, we don't take it for granted. And if you're looking for a, a home church, look no further. We think you found it. You're surrounded by some of the most amazing, honest, open, transparent people in all of Central Florida. Journey Church, would you prove me right by welcoming all of our guests one more time? Come on. Hey, keep it going for Journey Church Online as well. What's up, Journey Church Online? We love you. So grateful that you're here. Hey, well, I've got a lot to preach about today. I'm excited to get into the message. Um, but before I do, just want to uh, let you know two things that are coming up. You heard Paul talk about it, and that is that this Friday we have our first ever men's night here in the building. And so, yes, shout out men. Um, I'll be preaching. Um, I don't know all in all exactly what it's about. Um, I know what I'm preaching about, but I don't know what the night is going to be about. I I've been told that they have very manly things planned for you. And so I don't know what that means. I don't know if we're hunting on the grounds. I don't know if that, I don't know. Um, but uh, but we'll, it's going to be a lot of fun. Also, uh, we have a, a business leaders breakfast on April 29th. I want you to invite you to that because we have gatherings for everything and ministries for everyone. You know, we got ministries for men, for women, for youth, for kids, for the homeless. But we don't have a lot for business leaders. And so this is our attempt to try and speak to a community that maybe feels isolated or alone, like nobody knows what you're going through. Um, you come. It's going to be a good time. It's like a 7 a.m., I think. It's going to start. It's going to be real good. We got three entrepreneurs, Christian entrepreneurs in Orlando that are going to be speaking. I'm going to preach a message. And so it's, it's going to be great. All right. Well, are you ready to get into the, the message today? Yeah. Come on. I'm ready to preach it. Today we are going to begin a brand new uh, sermon series. What is a sermon series? It is a, a collection of, of talks, like a season almost, and, uh, that are connected and tied. And it's really a series within a series because this year we launched a, a vision called Foundations Built Different. Every year we have a vision that guides our church in a spiritually with our resources. Uh, last year it was pray first, and we got the, the wristbands, and I, it's somewhere in my shirt. We got the wristbands, and, and this year uh, it was foundations built different. And what we wanted to do was a couple things. Number one, we wanted to teach you how to study the word and for yourself so that you can feed yourself. I'm, I'm grateful for my, my grandma. She was a great cook. I'm grateful for my mother. She was a great cook. I'm grateful for my wife. She is a great cook, but none of that helps when I'm home alone. Yeah, boy, be starving. <laughs> if I don't know how to cook, I'm grateful that you found a great church with a great pastor that preaches great messages and you're in a great small group. But listen, do you know how to cook when you're home alone? Do you know how to feed your soul when you need to feed your soul? That's why it's so important that you can learn how to dive into the scriptures on your own. And the second thing that we wanted to do throughout this series was introduce all of the people who decide to follow Jesus, because we got a lot of new Christians at our church. I love that. We want to introduce to you Christian doctrine. Say doctrine. Doctrine simply means what we believe about a thing. Now, I know that sermons on that don't normally interest you, because you got issues and problems and struggles like the rest of us, and you want sermons that are going to change your life. But here has, is what I have discovered in my life, that before you can change your life, you got to change your beliefs. That if you have right beliefs, someone say, right believing leads to right living. You got to believe right before you live right. And there are a bunch of people who raise their hands at the end of every service and they put on the little card and they tap with their phones now on the seat back pocket in front of them. I made a decision for Jesus. I'm like, amen. Now let me tell you what that means. Now let me show you what following Jesus looks like. And so today, for the next few weeks, we're going to start a new series on one of the most, God help me, most layered, most brain hurting most difficult doctrines in all of Christianity, which simultaneously happens to be one of the most beautiful, one of the most soul-filling, one of the most life-blessing doctrines 
we have in Christianity, and that is the doctrine of the Trinity. Someone say Trinity. Here's what the Trinity means. It means God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We're in a year-wide series called Foundations Built Different. For the next three weeks, I want to talk to you on the topic, God Built Different. God built different. Because our God is unlike the God of any other religion. He is unlike the God of Islam. The God of Islam is unipersonal. Now, I'm going to be using some big words today. I have a theology degree. I don't ever rub it in your face or talk much about it. But today, I'm going to do some teaching. Is that all right that I do some teaching today? I preach a lot. I preach a lot. But I'm going to do some teaching today. If you need me to shout, I'll try shouting in, the, in the between the teaching. If you need me to make jokes, I'll try making jokes in between the teaching. But I just felt like a mandate came on me today to teach you like if I was back in, in Bible college teaching students. And so, so I'm going to use words. So unipersonal, here's what that means. It means one person in one being. One person in one being. That's, that's not our God. Our God is not the God of Islam. Our God is also not the God of the Hindus. A quick Google search on Hinduism will show you that the Hindus serve up to the latest count 33 million different gods. We are not polytheists. So the Trinity doesn't mean that we serve multiple gods. Listen, we serve one God who is three persons in one God. And that we have a word for that. That word is called Trinity, which isn't really hard to understand that word, how we come to that word. That means tri-unity. There you go. <laughs> Trinity. Tri-unity. It makes sense. Or three in one. Now, if that breaks your mind, well, is it one or is it three? And I say both. And you go, that doesn't make sense. You're making this up. You should at least know that among all Christian denominations, and there are a lot, you've got Lutherans, Methodists, Protestants, Evangelicals, Catholics, Pentecostals, Baptists, all these Baptocostals, like a mix of them too. We, all of them, we don't all agree on the same things. Some of the things we don't agree on, like some of us do not agree on, on speaking in tongues or, or not speaking in tongues. Others debate exactly how the end of the world is going to look. We all know that Jesus wins. Amen. That's the most important. But some people believe that there will be a rapture that takes place. Uh, others believe that there will not be a rapture that takes place. But here's why it's so important for you to understand all that, that with all of those disagreements, this is the one thing, not the only thing, but one of the things that all Christian denominations believe, like agree on. And getting people to agree is tough. So, so please understand, if every Christian denomination in the world adheres to this doctrine, this must be pretty important. This must be pretty significant. And here's why it's important and here's why it's significant. Because you should know who it is you follow. <laughs> you should know who it is you said yes to. You should know who it is you've been singing to for the last 30 minutes. So when I say Trinity, I'm not, this isn't some, this is, this is, I'm just talking about this is who God is. And if you want to know God and fall more in love with God and serve God the right way, you should probably know who he is and get to know him better and better. My wife and I have been married now 15 years, and I remember that on our very first Valentine's together, I wanted to show her how much I knew her, like how well I knew her. Because my son didn't know. We didn't date very long. I told him this story earlier uh, this week. And he was like, what? You dated mom for how long before you got married? I'm like, listen, I did it, but don't follow my example, okay? <laughs> um, so I think I knew her like an hour, like a year and a half. An hour, wow. <laughs> I knew her for a year and a half. And then we started dating. We dated for 10 months. And then 10 months after we were dating, we got married. And so it was like pretty, pretty fast. But, you know, when you know, you know. <laughs> God, no. I told my son, I was like, but don't do that. You wait five years. Um, but I got her a uh, so very first Valentine's Day, some gifts to show her how much I knew her, um, or at least I felt I did. The first thing I got her was some uh, Ferrero Rocher chocolate because it's her favorite chocolate. And also, like, each gift was like a reflection of her personality. So I was like, I got this for you because you're sweet and a little nutty. <laughs> let's, let's be honest. You're a little cricket. Second gift I got her was a, a Starbucks cup. And I want you to know, I didn't get her a Starbucks cup. I got her this Starbucks cup. This cup is 15 years old. We've saved it all the way since we got it. For This is why I don't have space in my cabinet for the coffee cups you be buying me as presents, because this is the only one that I have in there. And I got her a Starbucks coffee cup to represent. Why, why do you think I got her a Starbucks coffee cup? Huh? She likes coffee. Huh? Because she's the best part of waking up. That's Folgers. 
That's cute, though. I wish I had your game. That's good. That's right. I got her a Starbucks cup. I was like, girl, you's expensive. <laughs> like Starbucks. My wife is so expensive, man. She's so expensive. This is how God made her. She is allergic to fake gold. I tried to buy her gold earrings one time. They were fake gold. She was like, they real? I was like, yeah. She put them in. She broke out. I was like, come on, God. <laughs> You're going to do me like that, Lord. It's a little expensive. And, uh, and then I got her this. A Rubik's Cube. Why do you think I got her this? <laughs> That's right, because she complicated. I was like, girl, you complicated. <laughs> and I cannot figure you out. She has a lot of sides to her. She has the mother's side, and she has the girlfriend's side, and the wife's side, and the business owner's side, and the daughter of God's side, and the leader's side, and all these different sides. And the moment I figure out one side, I got five other sides. <laughs> That I have no idea what to do with him. And, uh, but it's the joy of my life trying to figure that out. You know, this is a game. And this is what I have been doing the last 15 years of our marriage. <laughs> just, just, trying, just trying to figure her out, trying to get to know her more. Listen, loving Liz, my wife, is easy. Understanding her is complicated, which is why I'm trying to connect to the Lord, because loving the Lord is easy. But understanding him, that's complicated. In fact, you're going to be trying to understand him for all of eternity to the end of time in heaven. Even the angels, the Bible says, surround him, the seraphim. And as they surround God, the Bible says that they say holy, holy, holy. And theologians believe that every time they say holy, it's because they discovered a new side of him. He's limitless. He's unlimited. He's eternal. And so understanding him, it makes sense why it can be difficult sometimes because there's so much to him. It's so complicated, can be complicated, that theologians actually had to invent a word to describe him. So the word Trinity is not in the Bible. The word Trinity is a word theologians invented. Now, one of the biggest knocks that the doctrine of the Trinity gets is from critics who say, well, how can you believe in the Trinity if the Trinity is not in the Bible? And by that, they mean the word is not in the Bible. And I'm like, okay, but do you know what other word is not in the Bible? The Bible. You will not find the word Bible in the Bible. We had to create it so that we can summarize in one word what would take a lot of words to explain. Imagine if you're walking down the street and someone says, oh, what you reading there? And you're like, oh, I'm reading Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Acts, Romans, Revelations, Jeremiah. Uh, the Bible. It's a word we made up to describe what is in one word what would take a lot of words. Are you getting it? You following it? It's also the Bible, not a word we had until the complete revelation of it came in. We couldn't have said Bible in the Bible because we didn't have the Bible until we had the Bible. We didn't have the Trinity knowledge as we know it until the entire revelation of God came in. We didn't know that God was three in one until the word became flesh. Jesus stepped on earth. We didn't know that God was the spirit of God until the Holy Spirit descended on the day of Pentecost. So it's a word that we created to summarize what would take a lot of words. And it's a word that we created because we created it once we had the revelation of it. So if someone is saying that the word Trinity is not in the Bible, that's amen. I agree. I'm with you. But if they say that the Trinity is not in the Bible, ooh, I'm going to have to check you there. Time out. Uh-uh. It's actually all over the Bible. In fact, it's in the very first page of the Bible. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God, that's the Father, God the Father, created the heavens and the earth Verse 2, now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the what? The spirit of God was hovering over the water. So you have God the Father. Now you got the spirit of God hovering over the waters. And look at verse 3, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. And where you have and God said, you have Jesus. Now I know what you're thinking as you read that. Pastor, that's a stretch. I'm all with you right there. Spirit, very clear. God, very clear. But and God said, how are we going to make that Jesus? 
Remember, we didn't have the revelation of the Trinity until the entire Bible was written. So when you go to the book of John in the New Testament, look what John 1, 1 through 3 says. In the beginning was the what? The spoken word of God. And the what was with God? Word was with God. And the word what? Was God. Well, now you're confusing me. Was he with God or was he God? He was God, and keep reading, he was with God in the beginning. How can you be with it and it at the same time? He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Remember what it said in Genesis 1 3? And God said, Let there be what? Look at this. And through him, the light of all mankind. Verse 14, just so we know that we're all talking about Jesus here. The Bible continues, and that word then became a human, became flesh, made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, Jesus Christ, who came from the Father. So right there in Genesis, we've got God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. In fact, when Mark writes his gospel, which Mark is actually the first gospel ever written, if you go in your Bible in order, you've got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but Mark was the first one ever written on the first page of that gospel. You hear Mark opening up his story, his gospel account of Jesus' life with the baptism of Jesus. Look what it says in verse 9. And at that time, Jesus, that's the son, came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Where do you baptize people in? Water. This is an important note. Mark 1.10. Then just as Jesus was coming out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the what? The Spirit descending on him like a dove. So now you got the Son and you got the Spirit. And at the same time, a voice came from heaven. You are my Son. Well, hold on. If God is in the water and God is in the dove, then who's speaking up there? You are my Son in whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Right there in Mark. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Take it to another level. Not only is it the Trinity, it's the creation story rewritten. Where is Jesus getting baptized? Where did Genesis 1-1 take place? So Mark is actually recreating Genesis' creation story, putting the Trinity in it because he's trying to communicate to us now that was the old world that was made, but now that Jesus is here, we got a new world that's being made. It's not the old world, it's the new world. Time itself is defined by it. We got B.C., before Christ. We got A.D., in the year of our Lord, and it's a new world where the poor are not cast out but cared for, where death is not the end of life but the beginning of life. It's a new creation now that Jesus is here. And Mark is saying, hey, that world is gone and the new has come. Take it another step forward. The Bible says that the Spirit descended on Jesus like a dove. If you look at the word hovered in Genesis, the exact Hebrew translation is not hover. The exact Hebrew translation is fluttered. <laughs> like a dove. Oh, this is so beautiful. I, 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 I I nerd out over these things. I get excited over these things. I hope you get as excited. I'm going to leave you to talk back to me a lot in this sermon just so that I know I didn't lose you when I talk about some things. So if you get it, be like, "Mm mm-hmm, amen, I I get it. It makes sense. If you stay quiet, I'll be like, I lost them. And so it's, it's a beautiful picture of the Trinity there, even Jesus himself. Look at Matthew 28, 19. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name, not the names, plural. The name, singular, of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This is so important that Jesus says, I'm about to go to heaven, and when I go to heaven, I need you to preach. And now when you preach about me, make sure you tell them who I am. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Make sure you don't leave that out. You always let them know, which is why I'm preaching on it today. He commanded us. All right, so three in one, what does that mean? Actually, because it's hard to get your mind around it. Well, I brought a graphic that might help us understand some of it. And so this is a little bit of of how you can kind of grasp and understand. Um, You've got the Father who is not the Son, who is not the Holy Spirit, who is not the Father or the Son. Yet you have the Father who is God and the Spirit who is God and the Son who is God. You have three persons, one God. Now, I know that this is really hard to understand. Um, I was trying to explain this to my 10-year-old. 
I was like, because if I can get my 10-year-old to understand the Trinity, I can do this on Sunday. Uh, I, can, I can preach this well to a bunch of adults. And so, and so I was walking him through it. And when I showed him this, he kind of got it, but he kind of didn't. So then I had to kind of dig deep into my illustration bag. And I was like, I think I got one more that might show you. So then I showed him this. And I feel like he really got it when I showed him this. <laughs> he really understood it. <laughs> Three Peter Parkers. Three Peter Parkers. Three different Peter Parkers. One Spider-Man. Huh? That's good preaching. Take it down, take it down, take it down. My college professor friends would persecute me for showing you that picture. Because on the one hand, it is like the Trinity. But on the other hand, it is very unlike it, because even in that example, one of them could do something that the other two weren't doing. But with God, whatever the Father does, the Son does. And whatever the Son does, the Spirit does. And whatever the Spirit does, the Father and the Son does. It's so hard. I mean, illustrations are my thing. Like, it's what I do. And I have been, I knew I was going to preach on this message July of 2023. And I have been working on this message since January of 2024, raking my mind for an illustration that would show you what the Trinity is like, who God is. And I went through everything. I was like, M&M, got the peanut, the chocolate, and the <laughs> I like an egg, got the, and everything. And not, every, it, it all failed in one way or another. Finally, I got the brain. And I was like, Lord, I got to preach this, and I don't have an illustration. I don't think they're going to get it with an illustration. I said, God, I can't. Why is there nothing on earth that is like you that I can show them to help teach? I can't find anything like you. Help me out. And you know what the Lord said? It's because there's nothing like me. <laughs> See, we got categories in our mind. Human is a category. Animal is a category. 2D is a category. 3D is a category. God breaks all our categories. There is nothing on earth like him because if there was something on earth like him, then that thing could be God. But the Bible says that God is holy. Holy means high above, separate, different than, nothing alike me in existence. I am holy. You can't, I'm sorry, JJ, you ain't got an illustration. But God, if I don't have an illustration, then it's going to stay a mystery which is exactly what I am, and you spend eternity searching me. Oh, it's beautiful. And, and, and here's why this matters. Listen, because if we don't believe that God is three persons in one being, then this verse doesn't make sense. 1 John 4, 16, God is love. That doesn't make sense. If God is unipersonal, if God is unipersonal, remember, unipersonal means one person, one being, if God is unipersonal, that doesn't make sense because you can't be loved by yourself. You could be angry by yourself. Some of us wake up angry by ourselves. <laughs> Ain't nobody said a thing. We just wake up pissed. My back hurts. My leg hurts. Taking it out on the dog, you know, just. You could be afraid by yourself. Many of us are. Home alone, we hear a crack in the, what was that? You could be angry by yourself. You can be afraid by yourself. But you can't be loved by yourself. Here's why. Listen, because love requires more than one person. And if God was unipersonal, then he could not be love. Because if the only person you love is yourself, that's not love. That's narcissism. That's vanity, qualities that do not belong to God. So the only way it's possible. I get so hype. I don't know why you got hype, but I get hype about this stuff. The only way it's possible, y'all, is if there were more than one person who was yet at the same time wrapped up into one being. You missed it. The only way that I can be love is if, if there were multiple persons, with, if there are different persons, not a multiple personality, 
multiple persons, that we're still at the same time being multiple persons, being one being. Because that's the only way you could be love. Let me, let, me, let me bring it down even more. So this was what time looked like before anything was created. It was the Father loving on the Son. The Son loving on the... The Father was looking at the Son and saying, I love you so much. Son. You're the best. You're the, oh, my gosh, Son, you're so beautiful. You're amazing. The Son was looking at the Father. And he was like, no, Father, you, oh, my gosh, Father, you're amazing. And the Spirit was like, nah, y'all too. Y'all two are just amazing. And, and before time began, they were loving each other. So then the, 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 the author of the Bible says, God is love because this is what he was doing from the beginning of time. He is love. That, that, do you get it? Like, it doesn't make sense if he's just one. He has to be more because you can't be loved by yourself. And, and why does that matter? Because once you understand that God is love, you understand that you weren't just created by God, you were created by love. And when we finally understand that we were created by love, we begin to understand the power of love. Let me take it deeper. This is philosophical. This is a little theological, but it's really good. If God were unipersonal, that is that he was one person and one being at the beginning of time, and then created you out of his power so that he could love you, then that means we live in a universe where power comes before love. And the primordial force of life, the primordial essence of life is power. Therefore, if I want to be like God, I should not pursue love. Instead, the pursuit of my life should be power. Because if I get power, then I can make people love me. I feel like I'm preaching well, but I don't know, because I don't know if you understand it or getting it. I seem to know you're with me. Are you with me? So, so we spend our whole lives trying to get power. But it doesn't work. To get love, it doesn't fulfill. Justice just started going to the gym with me, and we started working out together, which is fun, going with my 12-year-old, and, uh, and we're teaching him all the exercises. And I was trying to get him excited about it. So I was like, buddy, working out is great. It's great for your health. It's great for your mental health. It's great for your esteem. It's great for your jiu-jitsu. And then the last thing I said as a joke, all right, so please don't write me, all right? I just said as a joke. It's a father and son joke. It might be inappropriate in public, but I'm going to say it anyway because it goes with the sermon. I looked at him, and I said, Y'all really nervous. It's not that bad. <laughs> I looked at him. I said, hey, you know what I was working out is good for? Because he's 12, about to be a teenager. I said, it's good for the ladies. <laughs> just, laugh, just laughing. I mean, you better laugh, too, because you'll be fronting like that's not why you go to the gym. <laughs> Please. Well, it's good for my cardio. Shut it. <laughs> you haven't been on the bike one time this week. All right. And, and, it's, and it's only semi-true, though, because you can put all the muscles you want on your body. You can get the biggest booty you want. You can get the biggest biceps you want. Muscles can make them look, but it'll never make them love. Because you can't make some. Yet, we will spend our whole lives building power, trying to amass money, trying to amass promotion, trying to amass influence, trying to amass authority, trying to amass the bigger stick, the bigger weapon, so that people will respect. And it is a flawed premise because, first of all, you can never make someone lo love you. Even God, for all of his omnipotence, cannot make someone love him. Secondly, if you go, well, that's fine. I don't want love. I'm fine with power. Power is going to be the pursuit of my life. If power is the pursuit of your life, you are on a wild goose chase for fulfillment. Because power will never fulfill you. Why? Do you know why food sustains you? Why when you eat food, you feel full and you have life and you keep on living? Because food at its very base are made up of calories. Calorie is just a measurement of energy. Energy sustains you because energy is what made you. You were made because your mom and dad had a lot of energy. <laughs> and there was energy in the sperm cell, and there was energy in the egg cell. And when the cells met, there was energy that was released. Listen, you are sustained by energy because you were created by energy. The reason why power will never fulfill you is because you were not created by power. You were created by love. So your tank is only filled with love because we were created by it. Which means that if God is truly three in one, here's what this means. That means that according to the triune nature of God, that life should not be defined by the love of power, but rather by the power of love. 
Because power didn't make the world. Love did. Which means, which means, which means that love will do more in your life than power will. Love will accomplish more in your life than power will. Can I make it more applicable? That means that forgiveness will get more done than revenge. You think holding that grudge is going to do something? You will accomplish more freedom in your life, more justification, more righteousness, more retribution by forgiving that person than by looking to get them back. It means that giving will do more than taking and receiving. And about bad behind people's back. I've seen people lose their jobs because they were gossiping. I've seen people move into promotions and other places and spaces because the boss or some or a friend found out that they were talking good about them behind their back. Now, I'm not talking about sucking up. I'm talking about biblical principles here that love is more powerful than power. Love is more powerful than power. It means, if you want to be a good spouse, if you want to be a good friend, it means, listen, that you're going to get more done by apologizing for your role in the argument than by trying to win the argument. Because love will do more than power. I don't know if you ever, I need a witness in the room. I don't know if you ever won an argument and then walked away feeling like you lost it. Huh? You'd be like, I got them. And then you're like, I'm a jerk. I'm a stupid jerk. (laughs) Shouldn't have done that. Dang it. Why? Why do you feel that way? Because love will do more than power. Love will do more than power. That means you will change the world more, listen, by being faithful than you will by being famous. Because love will do more than power. Husbands, that means that you don't have to dominate your wives so that they can respect you. Serve them and they will respect you. (laughs) Wives, that means that you don't have to be sarcastic or snarky or disrespectful or rude to your husband to get him to throw out the trash. Serve him, respect him, and he will throw out the trash. You want him to throw out the trash? Just speak good about his muscles. <laughs> just be like, babe, those biceps, they're really big. I bet they could pick something up if they wanted to. <laughs> Husband be like, you know what? That's right. Let me get that garbage right quick. <laughs> what else do you need? Me, man, build house? I got you. We need you to let us know that. Why, 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 why? And you were yelling at him all week and he didn't move. Why? Because love will do more than power. Love will do more than power. Here's the second implication of the Trinity. If it is true and God has a triune nature, not a unipersonal one, that means that making more of others doesn't make you any less. Do you hear how they talk about each other? The persons of God. Look how they talk about each other. Look, look. John 16, 5. But now I, Jesus, am going away to the one who sent me. One, one. God is one. To the one who sent me, the Father. Look at verse 7. But in fact, it is best for you, talking to the disciples and us, that I go away. Because if I don't go away, then the advocate, the Holy Spirit, Won't come. Can I translate that for you? I know this is going to rock your theology, but Jesus is saying, hey, y'all, the Holy Spirit's better than me. The reason why is because I'm in the flesh right now, so I'm one body, which means I still got to go to sleep. I can't help you if I'm sleeping. I live in Jerusalem. If you live in America and I live in Jerusalem, I can't help you because you're going to have to Zoom call your prayer (laughs) because I'm here. And so he goes, it's actually, the Holy Spirit is actually better than me. So he gives the mic to the Holy Spirit. And he says, nah, Holy Spirit, it's all about you. And look what the Holy Spirit does the moment he gets the mic. Verse 14, and then the Holy Spirit, he will bring me Jesus' glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. So this ought to make you laugh. Because Jesus is like, no, let me tell you what it's about. It's about the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, take it away. He's like, hey, everybody, it's all about Jesus. I love Jesus. And Jesus is like, no, it's about the Holy Spirit. And look at verse 15. Look at verse 15. And all that belongs to the Father. (laughs) They're just all, they're just all, no, he's it. No, you, no, you. No, you, no, you. 
all of them. And then, and then look what it says. What about the father and the son? We haven't explored that dynamic. Look at chapter 17, verse 1. After saying all these things, Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son. But why? So he can give glory back to you. This is what preaching is. I try and tell our young preachers, and I pray this sometimes. I go, God, I want to do well. I do want to do well. Glorify me. That's what it is. Do well. But not so that people post about me, talk about me, like me, follow me, come to my church. I want to do well so that I can give you glory, so that I can make you famous. So Jesus was glorified so that he could give glory to the Father. Look at verse 4 through 5 in case you were wondering if if they were all there in the beginning. I brought glory to you here on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. Now, Father... Bring me into your glory, the glory we shared before the world began. Before the world began. They were bragging on each other before we got here, loving on each other before we got here. Every time I preach, I brag on Pastor Liz. I talk about, I tell stories about her all the time, how amazing she is, how smart she is, how awesome she is. And when she preaches, and she's going to preach in three weeks, she's going to be preaching on Mother's Day. She's going to preach a great message. I'm just here. It's so awesome. And I know, I know how she's going to start. I know how she's going to start. The moment she gets up here, she's going to honor me. She's going to say, I just want to let you know I have the best husband in the world. He's so smart. He's so funny. He's so sexy. He's anointed. He's a great kisser. All these things she's going to say about me. And, you know, you know, it is it's true what it's true. It's what it is what it is. You know, she, she brags on me. And what I hate about the dynamic of the relationship, though, is because I preach, you know, 38 times a year, and she preaches one time a year. You might think because I'm up here, I'm greater, she's lesser. But if you saw everything that she did behind the scenes at church, and if you saw everything she did at home to keep our family together, you would know. (laughs) In fact, this is what the relationship looks like on Sunday. But if you were to see this relationship on our off day, she would look like the greater and I would look like the lesser. Because on our off day, because she does so much for our family, I'm like, baby, what do you want to do? Where do you want to go? How do we? And she has to be very careful because she knows whatever she asks me, 99% of the time, I'm going to do it. And so she's very careful what she asks for. And sometimes she asks for things that I don't want to do. But I, 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 I'm like, hey, you, you got it. I want to see you be happy. You, it's all about you. It's about you. And like this, like this week, this week we were at our favorite coffee shop, and I ordered the coffee drink that I like, that I know I like. She found out that there was another drink that might be good. She likes this drink. So she ordered another drink that she had never tried before. So we leave the coffee shop, and she takes one sip of her drink, and she looks at me, and she goes, hmm, that's good, which I know already what that means. (laughs) That means I want your coffee. (laughs) I figured that out a long time ago. (laughs) I figured that piece out a while back. I got that one. I know that one. Yeah, but I just pretended like I didn't hear her. So she tried again. She was like, my stomach hurts because <laughs> it had some cinnamon or spice in it. And I was like, mm, that's, that's too bad. <laughs> Just stomach hurts. I don't drink a lot of coffee. It's the only time I drink the coffee. And then she just, she knew that I was ignoring her at that point. She was like, do you want to trade? <laughs> no, I did not want to trade. But I smiled. I looked at her. I said, sure, baby, let's trade. And I gave it to her. Now, other guys... Might look at that and be like, bro, you whipped. Give her your coffee, bro, you whipped. But husbands, it doesn't make you any lesser to make much of your wife. Doesn't make you any lesser. Listen, because making more of others doesn't make us any less. Making more of others makes us more like God. Making more of others makes us more like God. This is why Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. People think if people worship me, I'm godlike. When you serve, you're godlike. People worship you, that makes you an idol. When, when you serve people, that makes you like God. It's how you were created. Let me make this more practical. So, so listen, so parents, this means you got to watch out how you talk to your kids. Because we will shout at our kids. We will yell at our kids. We will be rude with our kids. And when, and when someone tries to correct us, we go, mm, I'll wipe that butt. I made that. I wiped that butt. I can talk to them however I want because I wiped that butt. Here's the thing. Just because you're the father and they're the son. Just because you're the father and they're the son doesn't make them any less than you. So listen, don't treat them like an adult. They're a child. Just don't take this message. They wake up tomorrow and be like, I want cookies for breakfast. And you'll be like, well, pastor said You're equal, so yeah. I want my bedtime to be 4 a.m. 
Pastor said. They're no, they're children. You've got to treat them like children. But you talk to them with the respect that you wouldn't equal. Every time I ask my kids for something, I say, please. I don't need to. <laughs> I don't need to. But I do it because I want to communicate with them. I respect you as an equal. That respect. Now, let me flip it. How are you talking, adults, to your adult parents? Because sometimes it flips when our parents get old, when they get in their 60s and their 70s, and they start getting a little. <laughs> then, what's happening here? It's got dark in here. Scared. Holy Spirit is like, pay attention to this. Somebody <laughs> needs to hear this. We look at our adult parents, and when we look at our adult parents, we're like, oh, they're old. They don't know what they're talking about. They don't know what they're talking about. Just because they're old doesn't mean they're any less. Talk to your 70-year-old parent like you would an equal. And talk to your 7-year-old kid like you would an equal. Bosses, how are you talking to your employees? Well, I pay their bills. And they grow your business. Talk to them like co-owners, not like employees. Employees. Why? I feel like in America we are so anti-job right now. Why don't nobody want a job? Because somehow... Somehow we've been convinced, listen, please, if you can fight through the distraction of the lights going up and down over and over again. Um, here's why we don't want jobs. I think, I think it's because we have bought into the fallacy that working for someone else makes us less. That don't make us less. That's, we are co-equals. It doesn't diminish our value. Here's my last point, why the Trinity is so important, why understanding this triune nature of God is so important, because there's joy in knowing God. There's joy in knowing God, getting to know who he is, specifically joy. Here is the implication of the fact that we serve a triune God and not a unipersonal one. That means that in the beginning of time, again, before there was an angel, before there was a demon, before there was a palm tree, before there was an apple, before there was Adam, before there was Eve, before there was dog, before there was fish, before there was bird, before there was sun, before there was moon, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit we're in perfect harmony and joy and peace. Each one of them loving on the other. All God, one God, but loving on the other in perfection. And it was so awesome. It was so great. They were just enjoying each other's company and, and speaking well of each other. And, and all of that happened. And if that is true, then here is the real reality. Oh, again, I nerd out about this stuff. But if that is true, then this is what that means. That means that God didn't create you because he was lonely. God didn't create you because he was bored and wanted to have fun. Because he was empty and needed to be filled. God didn't create you because he didn't have a joy that only you could bring into his life. Listen to me, you weren't created so that God could get joy. He already had it. You were created so that God could give joy. He don't, he don't need your songs. You can't even sing. He don't need your ties and your offering. He don't need your church attendance or your Bible reading. He doesn't even need your obedience. He doesn't need anything. He's God. He had it all. He created you because there was so much joy in him that out of the abundance and overflow, he said, Let's, this is too much. This is awesome. Let's share this with the creation. When my wife and I made justice, our oldest, um, the hospital part, not the other part, but the hospital part, when he came out, man, oh, the love I have for him. Oh, my goodness. I'm not trying to rub it in the face of anybody who's currently wrestling with, um, you know, getting pregnant and things like that. But, gosh. Because there is this, you know, people be talking and they be saying, like, all babies are busted when they're first born. Which I got to be honest, I felt that way too at some uh, uh, point. Because they looking like aliens, heads misshapen. Um, you're like, is this really it? You look at the doctor, right? But I tell people, I tell them, I, I get what you're saying, but wait till you have your own. 
Because I remember looking at Justice thinking he was the most beautiful thing I had ever. And where did that beauty come from? We had no experience together. We hadn't played catch yet. We hadn't played video games together. We haven't had a conversation. Where was the beauty for him coming out of? And where was my love for him coming out of? I'll tell you, because the first time I looked at him, I didn't think this is justice. I thought, ah, oh, this is a little Liz and JJ. This is, this is us and our love for each other, preaching that is now manifesting in a new creation. And I love it so much because the love of husband and wife has overflown. And you know it's true because the moment the baby comes out, you start breaking up its body parts. You're like, oh, he's got your ears. Oh, he's got my nose. Oh, he's got your big toe. And none of that's true. None of that's true. They're all, they all look weird. You'd be like, well, he has my skin color. They all come out gray. But I'm seeing what I want to see, and what I'm seeing is the one that I love in the creation that I made and that I love so much. Now, it doesn't make my love for it any less real. It's just understanding the origin of that love, where that love comes from. And then, forget it, we want to give him the world. Then you see that baby home, and you're like, we got to give him a home. we got to give him a crib. we got to put things hanging down from the crib. we got to give him food. Let's give him food. Let's give him pets. Let's give him a dog. Let's give him Disney passes. And let's give him, let's give him video games. And let's give him hugs and kisses and prayers at night. Let's give it to him. Now Genesis 126 makes sense. And God said, let us, us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, make man in our Father, Son, Holy Spirit image and our likeness. He looks like us. That's why I love humanity so much, God says, because you are the overflow of the joy and peace that the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit had since the beginning of creation has overflowed into you. You are the product of that love. I see them when I see you. And then look at what verse 26 says, and let them have. He gives birth to you, and then he literally gives you a playground called earth. He gives you pets called animals. He said, you can play with some and eat others. It's okay. <laughs> and we're going to create, we're going to create waves and we're going to create sunsets and, and sunrises. And we're going to, we're going to chisel out the Grand Canyon and, and it's going to be in the Niagara Falls and oh, they're going to love it. Why? Because it all came out of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Joy is found in God. And when we recognize where to find it, we can get it. Because a sad life, listen, is one where the world revolves around you. But a life of joy is one where your world revolves around God. Listen, not even, this is how awesome this is, not even the Father revolves around the Father. <laughs> not even Jesus revolves around Jesus. The Father revolves around the Son. The Son revolves around the Spirit. The Spirit revolves around the Father and the Son, and all of Him is God. Which means, I'll take the glasses off of this, that Jesus' example, that the Father's example, that the Holy Spirit says, it's going to really break your brain, but it's a revelation I've heard Holy Spirit depositing the Spirit, that joy is found when you revolve around God. Did you get it? And anytime anxiety slips into your life, worry slips into your life, fear slips into your life, or doubt slips into your life, it's because you slipped into the center of your life. But if you step out of the center of your life, I'm tired. That's a great way to get exhausted. How about you're good? I'm hurting. Your healer. I'm broken, you're a restorer. I'm lost, 
you're my compass. When you begin to revolve around life, let me give you a picture of joy. God, you're awesome. There's no one else like you. You're mighty, the alpha, the omega. You're beautiful. I give you everything, all my praise, all my worship, all my finances, all my life. There's nobody else like you. Forgive me for stepping in here. This ain't me. You don't even do this. Let me get out. Put you in the middle. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. Stay standing, stay standing. Every head but every eye closed. Some of us need to get out of the center. Get out of the center. Get out of the center. Close your eyes. Bow your head right now. Will you repent? Will you turn? And will you look at the Lord and say, God, forgive me for making this past season of my life about me. It's not about me. It's about you, Lord. I put you. You don't even revolve around you. How could I revolve around me? You don't even revolve around you. So, Lord, I put you in your place. You are my God. Money is not my God. You are my God. He is not my God. She is not my God. Ministry is not my God. You are my God. I put you at the center. I lift your name up, Lord God, and joy will return to you in Jesus' name. If you're in this room today and you are far from God, you don't have a relationship with Jesus, you really do need to put him at the center. Maybe you grew up in church and you left Jesus a long time ago. Maybe you come from a different walk of faith or maybe you came here from an atheistic walk of faith and this makes sense to you. And you go, yeah, that's the only way God could be loved. And I'm going to put that love at the center of my life. If that's you, when I say three, I want you to raise your right hand high. Who am I asking to raise their hand? People who are tired of being in the center and they say, Jesus, I'm going to give you a shot. All over this room, I'm going to put you in the middle. If that's you on the count of three. One, two. Three, raise your right hand high right now, right now, right now. Amen, amen. If you raise that hand, let me pray with you. Everybody pray this prayer out loud. Say, Father God, today I step out the center and I put you in. Jesus, you died on the cross for my sins. I put you in the center. Holy Spirit, fill my life. Fill it with peace. Fill it with joy. Fill it with life. Fill it with energy. Fill it with strength. I put you at the center of my life. Today I make you my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, pray your hands together. Welcome those. Hey, if you made that decision, take your phone out, tap the little sign. Either in front of you. What an incredible and powerful word from yes. Pastor JJ on yes, the yes. Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the glue that holds the Trinity together is love. Yes. And it's and it's that love that it's made possible for us to be able to receive salvation as a gift as the scripture tells us in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 10, that salvation is a gift from God, not of our works. Amen. And it's all because of love. And if you've made that decision today, if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says if you, have, if you confess your sins to Christ, he is faithful and powerful enough to forgive them. And if that is you today, we would love to know that by scanning the QR code and letting us know if you have made that decision to receive Jesus, not just as your Lord, but also as your Savior. Savior, I am saved. Lord, he is my master now. That's he right. is, he's the one who leads me now. And we want to know that, but also we want to come alongside you. So let us know, scan the QR code or go to journeyorl.com forward slash decision. We'd love to hear that you have made that decision and welcome home. Welcome to the family. Yes, welcome, welcome. Welcome, and we would love to hear from you, and we'd love to hear also how this message spoke to you. So everyone, chime down below in the chat. Let mm -hmm. us know how this spoke to you. How are you going to apply this this week? Uh, I know for me, it spoke with uh, when he said love does more than power. Come on. That focus on love rather than power. It's it, it's a, it's amazing to know that God is love, yeah. right? And so uh, that's what spoke to me. How about you, Pastor Actor? How did the message speak to you? Man, of course. Uh, I am a big Bible nerd. I, I love theology and the fact that we're getting deep into the mm. nature of God, God built differently. Mm. Uh, that's what makes Christianity so unique. And that's what separates Christianity from all the other religions in the world is we have a God who is three in one, yes. who is both powerful, who is separate, who is holy, which is that what it, it mean, that's what that means is that's he's right. completely separate, but he's so near at the same time. Mm. And he does that via the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And so if you believe that, put that on the chat. Give a Holy Spirit dove emoji. Yes. If you believe in the Holy Spirit, uh, the Father, uh, I don't know, uh, put, a, put a Father emoji on there. And then Jesus put a cross on there. Just put the Trinity as an emoji on the chat. On. We would love to see that. So a Father emoji, a cross emoji, and a Spirit dove emoji or yeah. fire. That's you know, right. the Holy Spirit reveals himself as we, fire as well. We want to hear from you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and if you made that decision, 
we do have a next step for you once you give your life to Christ. Um, the work doesn't stop there. Jesus is Savior. Now Jesus is Lord. He's got an assignment for you. Yes. And we want you to go ahead and, and get into that assignment. And the way that you do that is by signing up for Next Steps online. We have it for you available. Yes. It's on demand. You can go and scan the QR code to get access to that Next Steps. You can go to journeyrl.com forward slash Next Steps to get plugged in. Let me tell you, it, it you will make a difference. You are online. We don't see you and you may not know, but whatever it is that you decide to do online and how to serve our church online, we're going to feel the effects. You're almost like God <laughs> where we can't see him, but we know he's there because of the effects that he leaves behind. And that's what you're doing when you serve online on journey online. So that's right. And, uh, um, along with next steps, I love next steps. Um, it's a way for, um, for us to give back. And there's another yeah. way you would like to give. There's a few ways you can give, you can do so by the journey Amen. app. You can give there. Uh, then you can also visit journeyroll.com forward slash give. That's another way to give. Another way is through uh, texting the word journey ORL to 77977. Yeah. Or you can scan the QR code below um, if you feel uh, led and compelled to give. Uh, another way to give as well is by sharing this link, sharing this message, yeah. sharing what, what God has done for you today. And, and it's powerful when you share uh, what God has done in your life. And if you want to keep learning about the Trinity, if you want to go deeper into the Bible, go and sign up for the Bible app. Yes. The Bible app is free. It's accessible. Journeyrl.com forward slash homepage. You can click on there. You can sign up for the Bi the Version Bible app and get late. on the plan. It never, is never too late. Never too late. Never too late. Well, hey, friends, thank you so much for joining us. We love you, Journey Online. We hope you have a great Sunday and a blessed weekend. And please... Let's see you next week. God bless. God bless you.